Evi stands for myalgic encephalomyelitis, and this is a name which came into medical usage following an editorial in the Lancet Medical Journal in 1956. And it was used to describe an outbreak of this illness that had occurred at the Royal Free Hospital in London the previous year. Uh, the outbreak had been, at that time had been called Royal Free Disease, but the Lancet editorial named it myalgic encephalomyelitis. And it was a term that was used because these patients had muscle symptoms, which is where the myalgia comes from, and they also had a lot of brain symptoms, which is where encephalomyelitis comes from. And in medical jargon, encephalomyelitis means inflammation, which is itis, within the brain, which is encephalo, and myo, which means spinal cord. So it means, in pathological terms, inflammation within the brain and spinal cord. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a name that was introduced by the medical profession during the 1980s, um, partly as a reaction to the fact that there was renewed medical and scientific interest in this disease, and partly because the medical profession decided that it did not like the term um, ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, because there has always been and continues to be um, a considerable degree of controversy and uncertainty as to whether there is actually inflammation within the brain and spinal cord. So the medical profession, in its wisdom, decided to rename and redefine ME as chronic fatigue syndrome. And the way it redefined uh, ME as chronic fatigue syndrome is that it brought in a lot more people under this umbrella of chronic fatigue syndrome who previously would not have met a diagnostic criteria for ME. Um, a lot of Patients, of course, dislike the term chronic fatigue syndrome. I dislike the term chronic fatigue syndrome because I feel we've um, widened the diagnostic net as to the, who comes under this umbrella uh, of, of chronic fatigue syndrome. And in a way, it's rather like saying that everyone who has some form of headache, whether it's a migraine headache or even a brain tumour headache, can be put under an umbrella of a chronic headache syndrome and say that they all have the same cause and they all have the same form of management, when clearly this isn't the case. The combination term of ME stroke CFS is really a messy compromise to try and keep the medical profession on side, who certainly in the UK, and I think this would be true for the USA and many parts of Europe where this illness is recognised, um, to keep the medical profession on board who want to use the term CFS, and the patients who, not surprisingly, and I agree with them, want to use the term ME. So we have this messy compromise of ME, CFS, and in actual fact, I think what we have also is an umbrella which is covering a wide variety of clinical presentations, and equally, it's covering a wide variety of disease pathways or subgroups. So it's going back to this headache syndrome or joint pain syndrome. We're trying to put everyone who has some sort of chronic fatigue under this MECFS umbrella, and I think very wrongly saying that they've probably all got the same cause and so that they've all got the same form of treatment. And what I think we've got to do, which is I think what the research community is now taking on board, is to go back several steps and so to try and subgroup these people who come under this MECFS umbrella into clinical subgroups and pathological subgroups so that we can find effective treatments for these different subgroups under this umbrella because quite clearly not everyone under this umbrella is going to respond in the same way. I think the vast majority of my medical colleagues remain convinced that ME is not an appropriate name for this illness, largely because this problem with encephalomyelitis and the lack of pathological proof, evidence, um, that there is an inflammation taking place within the brain and the spinal cord. There are certainly abnormalities taking place within the brain, and we know that from the research but we don't have any hard scientific evidence to demonstrate inflammation in the brain and, and within the spinal cord.
Um, my way around this is to propose that we actually rename myalgic encephalomyelitis myalgic encephalopathy, which would take the inflammation out of the, the encephalomyelitis and uh, imply that we have an illness here which is affecting muscle and brain function, which is what an encephalopathy is, but without the widespread inflammation. So I have proposed that as uh, have some of my colleagues. It is something which is accepted here by government, Department of Health, NICE, um, but it, 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 it hasn't yet achieved any sort of degree of widespread acceptance. So at the moment we remain in this, this very unsatisfactory position where we have patients calling the illness ME, doctors calling it CFS, and those of us who are trying to make some sort of compromise calling it ME-CFS. My preference is to use the term ME as myalgic encephalopathy, which takes the heat out of the argument. And I find when I use this uh, in the presence of my medical colleagues, it is accepted normally without any great problem. But if I go and talk to my medical colleagues about myalgic encephalomyelitis, instead of actually talking about the illness, talking about how to diagnose it, talking about how to manage it, it just stems back into an argument about the fact that there is no encephalomyelitis. And I think as long as my medical colleagues remain so unconvinced and even hostile to the concept of encephalomyelitis, I think we have a major problem because all that results in is my colleagues abandoning the term ME and using what I regard as this awful term chronic fatigue syndrome. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube of tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging of mail naar wvp at ma cvsverenigingnl De beste vragen worden in een volgende video behandeld.